Hi, today I thought I'd give some tips on how to maintain tonal center using a digital pitch pipe or an app like TE Tuner. Now without getting too far down into the weeds of tuning theory, there are some things you should know. I need you to sit tight through this next part. It's okay if you don't understand the mechanics of everything I'm about to say. Just listen to where the conflict is. It's important to recognize that there are a lot of different tuning systems out there, and there have been since the beginning of music making. As we make music, we make compromises to keep things as pleasant to the listener as possible. And to be honest, that aesthetic changes over the centuries and between different cultures. Pianos, for example, are equally out of tune with themselves when compared to just or pure intonation. Now, if you line up three proficient musicians that sing or play the violin or clarinet or other instrument like that that can subtly move its pitch, those three musicians can perform a major chord that will be much more consonant and more pleasing to most of our ears than that same major chord on a piano. That's because in order to line up the sound waves, we lift the pitch a little bit of that fifth of the chord. We lift five just a little bit, and ever so slightly lower the third. Now don't tell any singers that. It's likely that as a singer, we might be singing that third a little bit too low anyway, so I would never recommend that you consciously lower a third. I'm just talking about how it lines up compared to a piano. Now remember, right now I'm talking about the notes in a chord, one, three, five. That has a different tuning to our ear than those same five notes sung as a scale. I know that sounds wild, but listen, when we're singing a scale, we lift two, three, and six and seven. Now, the problem is that when you sing a major scale as opposed to a chord, you need to lift the scale degrees two and three, and actually six and seven as well, if you're paying attention. So as you can tell, that creates a bit of a problem. There's a discrepancy. When we sing a scale, our ear wants to hear certain notes lifted. But when we sing a chord, all of those notes together, we want to hear different notes lifted. And in barbershop, we really want those chords to be in tune and ringing. How can you sing three both higher and lower than a piano? You can't. You don't. And that is why it's often a futile exercise to go through your music and mark pluses and minuses over all of the notes compared to a chart. We need to just accept and understand that everything we do is a little bit of a compromise and trust our ears. So now what? Well, the first thing I'd like you to do is forget everything I just said. All of it. If you want to nerd out about tuning sometime with me, let's do that. But right now, I want to give you some practical tips for holding pitch in a key. So what advice do I have for you with regard to singing in tune and holding pitch? One, become the very best singer that you can. Fix your vocal production. I find that it's vocal production, not our ears, that are most likely to keep us from singing in tune. And most tuning problems are fixed when we address our vocal production. That said, this is not a vocal production presentation. So let's do some exercises to work on both our ears and our vocal production in this context. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is practice singing up and down five notes. We're going to play the bottom note, otherwise known as tonic or do or first scale degree. I'm in the key of C. So we're just gonna sing do, 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 do. I'm starting and ending on this pitch. Now, was I perfect? No, not at all. So I'm gonna do it again and again and again until I feel really good about my relationship between what I'm singing and what I'm hearing. Now, another cool thing you can do with this is put in a set of headphones, especially one that has a microphone on it. That way you can listen to the pitch that's coming out of this. You can also take advantage of the tuning feature and it will show you what you're singing as opposed to fighting with what it's producing. I hope that makes sense. So the other thing I can do is watch this little green light go from note to note to note to note that I'm singing. So I'm gonna do do, 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 do. Just 
Let's sing on do. Here we go. Do, do, do. We really want to sing into that last sound. If I'm a little bit out of tune, listen to what happens. We want to get to the place where our sound disappears into the pitch we're hearing. Now, if we're singing with maybe less than stellar vocal production, it's going to fight against the sound. It might sound something like this. I'm not going to make you listen to any more of that. If I put a little bit more air support behind that, round out my tone a little bit, it'll match with this a lot better. It'll be training us both in vocal production and in tuning. Now I can do that same thing and spot check it. So instead of letting this play the whole time, I can play it once and then I can sing up and down and see how I do. do, do, do. So I can check it for a green smiley face, or I can play it back and see if I'm singing the right note. I really love these exercises where we can sing against a fixed pitch. It just gives us a lot of information about what our destination is. We always want to have in mind what our tonal center sounds like. The other thing we can do is start on that note and spot check, let's say, the fifth note. You can check it by playing back. That builds our aural skills and match it. Or you can check it by looking for the green smiley face. But remember that the ear is going to win once we train it and once we know what an interval is supposed to sound like. Now coming back to melodic singing, most of us tend to not sing quite high enough as we ascend and we sing a little bit too low as we descend. Again, a lot of that has to do with vocal production. On our way up, sometimes it's hard to get into a proper mix of voice and use enough head voice. On the way down, we tend to just jump right into that chest voice and it brings the pitch down with us. One of the things we can do is really work on our mixed voice and our ascent into head voice. Strengthening the register overlap between head voice and chest voice, really making sure we have a lot of options for mixed voice will really help so we have a lot of choices available to us. I'm sure you've heard a lot of different ways that this is expressed. Take bigger steps up, smaller steps down. Ascend joyfully, descend reluctantly. You should definitely do what works for you and use the terminology that makes most sense to you. But always preserve your vocal production. Remember that your eyebrows, shoulders, and fingers don't sing. Now consider for a moment that sound waves don't go up and down the way we think about pitch. Vocal folds vibrate faster and slower. Particles in the air bunch up and spread out. We'd be much better off eliminating tension and working again on our vocal production than scrunching up our shoulders, lifting our eyebrows, adding tension, and doing weird things with our mouths. Don't do that. Now, I'd encourage you to take the very same exercises we did above, singing one, two, three, four, five, and one, five, pitch them up a little bit, maybe up a fourth. Get firmly into your head voice. Now for the sake of time, I'm gonna let you play with that in your own range. Feel free to pause the video right now if you'd like to do that. I really like working on those short five note exercises so we can really focus on technique without worrying about getting too far into a song or memorization or breath issues. So how do we take what we just did and apply it to a song? Well, first, I recommend singing any song against a fixed pitch. Sing it first against the keynote of the song, which is tonic or the first scale degree, otherwise known as do. So for example, let's take Let Me Call You Sweetheart. I'm singing this in the key of F. The first three notes are let me call. Call is an F. We wanna make sure that that is in tune. Let me call. Our sound should be disappearing into the sound of this pitch. Let me call you sweetheart, I'm in love with you. We don't have too many more of those Fs to sing against, but we want to be very aware of that destination note. Let's do that one more time. You can sing melody with me, or you can sing a harmony part. Let me call you sweetheart, I'm in love Now ideally, you can mark your music every single time you sing that keynote. And if you don't read music that well, if you're still working on that skill, 
Use your ear to hear every single time this note comes up. Let's see if we can find it later in the song. Keep the love. There's that note again. Keep the love. We want to be right on it. Keep the love light glowing. And then even a little bit later. Let me, let me. There's that note. Let me call you. Let me call you, sweetheart. I'm in love with you. So we want to know where all of those notes are. Then we can take the training wheels off, start the song, and check that note when we get there. Let me call. Looking for that F, looking for that smiley face. Now I have a new one for you. Instead of singing against tonic, instead of the first scale degree, I'd like you to sing against the fifth scale degree, dominant. Now we still want to sing in the same key, so make sure that we have firmly in mind that this starts on let me call in the key of F. One, two, three, four, five. That's five, so I'm going to play a C. And I'm still starting in the low. Let but I'm listening up. This is going to allow me to kind of sing into the overtones, sing into these higher tones. Let me call, let me call. That call note, which is our keynote, is really important. We want it to fit in perfectly with this C that I'm playing. Let me call. That is a very open consonant relationship. That's why it's called a perfect fifth. It's perfect. Finally, we can take those training wheels off and spot check. When we know when we hit that note, we can pause and look for it. Here's that C. Let's see what happens every time we hit that note. Let me, let me. That was better. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. That's supposed to sound like that because I'm singing a C against a D. It's a major second. Let me hear you whisper that you love me too. So once I've identified where those notes are, I can give them a little tap when I get there. Let me hear you whisper that you love Love me too. I'm going to bring you back into the key. To make it harder, we're going to sing a longer phrase and see if we're still in tune. So here's an F. I'm going to start you. Then I'm going to stop. You keep going. Let me call you sweetheart. Hold the word love. Love. How'd you do? Let's go from keep the love light glowing. Here we go. I'll sing for a little while, then I'm gonna cut out again. Keep the love light glowing in your eyes so true. Let me call you. Were you right on the last note? So there are some things about this song that are pretty easy. We keep coming back to that note, but there are some things that are challenging. It jumps around. I'd encourage you to do this with any of your contest songs, any of your regular rep songs, and see how it works for you. Let me know how that goes. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you soon.